hello and welcome back i hope uh, you didn't mind waiting for a bit um i was writing the assembly language code bit earlier i made few mistakes i didn't terminate and i didn't use the commas and the underscore so that's why i had some issues i went back and reread and i fixed the error so now let's go into debug and learn how this msp changes to psp okay so when i go in here when it goes to the exception complete and then right click debug as so we coming here i will build again to show you it has got zero errors that's what we are concentrating on zero errors all the time yeah zero errors zero warnings which is what we wanted and that's good and then now we're going to go and debug set debug operation so it's changing to c c plus plus to debug perspective and we already linked to debug okay debugger make sure st link is on enable yes and go to debug mode and then once it hits 100 percent it will ask you to switch and hit switch and it will change to debug mode i'll show you how the msp and the psp change waiting for target yes uh, shortly download verify debug i'm going to switch again to debug because it missed to ask to switch from perspective mode so i'm just making sure uh, we are still in debug mode so i'm clicking that it will start to regenerate all the files and then come to debug mode once it finishes waiting for debugger connection yes yeah we are on e stack waiting for debug download yeah okay we are inside debug mode i'll show the general registers of what happens in there now if i click so now the stack pointer is 0, 02001 uh, triple f0 so that's what you will see at the msp whatever now we're in the thread mode so whatever you do uh, it will show the msp value will be shown in the stack pointer so i'm going step into just as one step at a time so now the ldr is loaded it started the psp start address and now the R0 has changed to PSP address and now watch now it loaded so now the SP select equal to 1 so we asked the processor to change from PSP mode from MSP mode to PSP so at this point the PSP is loaded to the processor to the stack pointer so when you come up here now the stack pointer is showing change sp to psp so now it's loaded so keep going step into and it's checking for the control to say if we selected that and the control bit is 2 and that's showing there which is good and now you will see now it's pushed and now the new data whatever on the psp it went through the whole program and now from MSP changed to the PSP. Now the stack pointer, if you see, it shows 2001FE00, FE00. So this is how you change. Um, by writing a code, you can also change the location of your uh, static RAM from MSP 512 bits to PSP. This, um, this is how you have to do it. So you got to go step into and now let's generate the um, uh, handler, the interrupt. What happens when you send the interrupt? Um, so this is what happens when you click on the interrupt. In the exception mode, it should load the MSP value. So now I clicked on the exception. Now in the exception mode, as we learned, it doesn't care whatever uh, in the PSP uh, section it only holds to the MSP section so 
whatever value in the MSP that will be in the um, uh, stack pointer. If I keep pressing the step into uh, return sum, now it should go to attribute and go to generate now now we see generate exception so now it will go and check the generate and r2 value is there on the register yes and click on step into yeah so now if you check the stack pointer see there is a different value by the attribute it has its uh, different value but now the introduction of the SVC handler it doesn't matter whatever value you are in the PSP whenever an interrupt is introduced the processor will only concentrate on the MSP so whatever the MSP address that's what you will have it in the stack pointer so this is what I wanted to show you and this is how um, uh, you got to change from uh, MSP to PSP by writing this small code and this is how in general in the industry you, you got to use so by writing a small code you can actually change the uh, value of uh, the load settings from MSP to PSP and this is what you got to do so let's go back to our learning for today So this is what we covered earlier. Uh, I was showing you the program. So the current stack pointer R13 to change the PSP in thread mode to MSP in the handler mode. So when you say in the one kilobyte, uh, the, the stack PSP ends. So that's where the stack MSP starts. MSP end and the stack PSP start. So at the current in, in thread mode, by default, the static pointer um, will point out to PSP and in handler mode whenever there is an um, expression or an interrupt handle then immediately your stack pointer will only worry about MSP doesn't worry about PSP so that's what this is and the demo of the stack we just uh, learned through the code to access MSP and PSP in, in assembly code you can use the MSR and MRS um, uh, instructions in a C program, you can write an inline assembly code using naked function. So this is the function that I use to write inside the C program. This attribute tells the compiler that the function is an embedded assembly function. It's not a C code, so the compiler knows that it's coming from the assembler function. You can get more information on the Cortex reference manual on page 34. And this is covered. It's just a recap. Basically, there are two stack pointers, uh, the MSP and PSP. The main MSP is the default stack pointer used after every reset. And it's also used for all uh, exception and handler for codes when in run in thread mode. Whereas the process stack pointer, this is an alternative stack pointer that can only be used in thread mode. It is usually used for application tasks in embedded systems and embedded operating system. So after powering up the processor automatically, it initializes the MSP by reading the first location of the vector table. You'll learn more about the vector table in the latest sessions. Now let's move on to the next step or the next stage of this session where you're going to learn about what is a function call and what is AAPCS standard. As you know in microcontroller and embedded programming there is a function call. You write a function and whatever you're going to write the first function that is called a caller so you're writing function math and you're using another function called function add so this is calling as a caller to come and go and execute this program so function underscore math this is a caller and the function add it's called the callee so the function call has two different types the function caller and the function callee In any C program, you would know that um, it includes the routine, subroutine, procedure, and function. Procedure is nothing but a routine that returns no result, then that's called a procedure. A function we know, a routine that returns a result value, then that's called a function. So it has the routine and subroutines. What is the AIPC standard? On page 16 on the procedure called standard, you will come to uh, learn all of this. It is a 
procedure called standard for ARM architecture. That's where the AAPCS stands for, ARM architecture procedure called standard. So if you go into the stack, R0, R1, R2, R3, these are the arguments that int A, int B, int C, int D. So these are all uh, we used. And R0 and R1 returns the value. You get the result in the uh, two registers, R0 and R1. R4, R5, R6, R7, up to R, R4 to R8 are the variable registers. R9 is the uh, platform register. R10 is variable register 7 and 8. R12 is the IP intra procedure call register. R13 is a current stack pointer and pointer. That's where the current point register is. And R14 is the link register and R15 is a PC program counter. So if you take that in an example, AP, AAPC a standard, according to the standard, a C function can be modified with the registers R0, R1, R2, R3 as we learned. R0, R1, R2, R3, and you have to link that with the linker and the PSR, and it's not the responsibility of the function to save these registers before any modification. First, you need to say what it is, and that argument will be initialized to the R0, R1, R2, R3, as we learn from um, uh, this R0, R1, R2, R3, the argument. And if a function wants to make use of R4 to R11 registers, then its responsibility between R4 and R11 to save its previous contents before modifying or retrieving before back into existing states. So the R0, R0, R1, R2, R3, R12, R14 registers are called, these are all called saver registers. And R4 to R11, it's called a savvy registers. The program is illustrated here to show you the difference about the caller saver register and callee save register. This is a callee save register. This is a caller saved reg saver register. To understand a bit more with that AAPC standard where the caller and the callee registers used, by default inside the function, the four arguments are seated with the R0, R1, R2, R3. So if we need more uh, arguments to be used, you can um, save that in the external um, RAM, external RAM. And uh, the result of all these registers will be stored in the Kali function on the sum. So in the R0 will be, the pop R0 will be saved in there and all the results will be showed in the AAPCS standard. Uh, this is about the inside uh, assembly instruction. I'll go back to the uh, program. I'll show you how that behaves. Um, to understand about the assembly, you need to go to Window, Show View, and click on this assembly. And you have to go to Function, the main function. So then that's the generate exception. And this is the program that we written earlier, changes from serial stack pointer from PSP to, sorry, from MSP to PSP. And this is the function that all the R0, R1, R2, R3, all the four registers, they all pushed into with the push format and then the result will be stacked and showed in the R7. So R7 is the one, as you can see, the return sum of R7 stored and that's where you get the value. And this is the generate exception of that result when you control that with the SVC, the SP select, either MSP or PSP. And that's the address for the uh, PSP. And we generated the exception. And the SVC handler goes and checks and prints out the uh, result in the sum. So this is um, the SVC handler. So far, we learned about how we changed uh, from um, MSP to PSP. So now we're going to learn what happened when an interrupt and an exception happens. To allow a C function to be used as an exception or interrupt handler, the exception mechanisms should come and save the value, the previous value of R0 to R3, and it's R12 and the linker value at an exception entrance automatically so that it restores the exception exit under the control of the processor hardware. In this way, once 
an interrupt starts and the function call goes to and uh, work with the interrupt handler and it has to return back to the uh, previous uh, function. So when it returns back to the interrupted program, all the registers would have the same value as when the interrupt entry sequence started. So this here explains when the interrupt function happens and when the processor goes and does the function call, it returns back to the MSP and this comes back to the thread mode. That's what it um, explains here. And this is about the caller and callee responsibility again. So the uh, caller will have all the argument registers and the callee will have the result of that argument registers or not pop out. And now let's understand about the stacking and unstacking. So when you use the stacking in task A, when the um, task A is set in the thread mode by learning that the Cortex M4 does the processor automatically in a full descending mode. So that's where it starts. So one after the other, first the um, first all these items are stored in the stacking. So when you hit the uh, function call R0, R1, R2, R3, R2, R4, all these addresses are stored in the stacking. And after an exception handler introduced, it starts to un unstack and go to the MSP. And, and it retrieves the last stacked item. So that's what unstacking is. Unstacking is nothing but after an exception handler um, asks the function call to do certain work, it goes and unstack the previous data and goes to the MSP, the main stack pointer locates to the last stack item. And this is about the stack initialization. The stack initialization has to be done before reaching main by using a vector table in startup code or the stack can be reinitialized after the uh, reaching the main program, especially if you want to use external. So we learned about the reinitialization in the main program. And to evaluate your target application, decide the amount of stack that you would want to allocate for that space. Um, and because we allocated for 512, so if you include more um, stack addresses in that value, then there will be occasions where um, you'll get a stack overflow issue. To avoid that, you need to have an external SRAM and uh, start to allocate that. And you have to know the process stack consumption model. So according to the microcontroller that you are using, you need to come up with uh, what model you're going to use. And this one is full ascending, full descending, and empty descending, empty ascending. Cortex M4 works on full descending mode, so FD. Then decide the stack placement in which RAM you're going to do, either in internal RAM or external RAM. In some complex applications, when you do the second stage of initialization, um, you you will come across this consumption model. So if you are using Cortex M4, the first location of the vector table as we learn from the thread mode, uh, that's a normal program mode where it runs, always it refers to the MSP. So you can configure this and do the changes in the linker description which you will learn in the separate section. But in a real-time operating system scenario, the kernel actually does this made USB and it starts to trace its own stack from PSP and for the user it will allow an RTOS to track the PSP. The kernel does the MSP trace and the user can do the process stack pointer trace in an RTS scenario. So, so far what we learned today, we learned about the introduction about the stack memory where it's used and it's different stack operation modes and how you can place a stack in the values and how the arguments and you went and learned about a different elaborative way of how the stack is when you want to change from MSP to PSP and you also learned how when uh, a function call, when an interrupt or an exception handle comes and how the program lose its current state from thread mode and goes to the handler mode and handler mode where the PSP is. And also you learned about the ARM architecture process procedure called standard. And also you learned about what the stack activities happen when an interrupt and the exception. As I said earlier, you have to also uh, side by side, keep your uh, mindset activity as well. And I have given you 
a Rubik's Cube as an example. So sometimes our own experience uh, maybe put us into a bit of a discomfort or a, um, um, a bit of a bothersome. So for that, you need to unlearn that and then start to relearn. So for example, take a Rubik's Cube. Um, you would have mastered and you know that uh, you can do it, but if someone comes and challenges you, can you undo that and redo it? And that's when um, you have to be like that. So um, don't ever uh, brag about it. Know everything every time. There is always a room to learn. You can always learn any new concept, any new things, and you can grow. So uh, for your professional growth, there is no end. You can learn everything on any day. So please be prepared to learn, unlearn, and relearn. That's what it is. And also learn from the mentor. Um, because the mentor uh, whom you are going to learn from, he or she might have gone through the hard way, he got the system processed and uh, um, he got everything set up so that you can just follow them and you just learn because they went through the hard way and then they learn and they're giving you the best uh, practice and best lessons. Instead of going um, by your own, by going to trial and error method, which will take a lot of time, and it will consume a lot of time with money as well. So therefore, just um, stick to a mentor and then follow their uh, standard of rules and you would be in no time, you'll be a professional soon. And also the third point I would like to know in your mindset today is learn the know. Always, uh, for example, when you want to be um, uh, uh, an embedded system engineer, learn what steps you need to take to go to that stage or when you want to uh, build a house for yourself or for your parents know what are all the processes that involve to build a house so without knowing if you start doing that it will be a lengthy process to finish eventually you will do it but you have to start with something and then uh, you have to learn from that and then correct the mistakes and do it for the next one so that's the three points that i would like to bring it to your notice and again, don't forget with your mindset involvement, do all of this and post your achievements in the group so the others will look at your achievement and then they'll get motivated and they'll do it as well. Write down your uh, top 10 goals and write down your top 10 ideas to achieve your goal. And please spend 30 minutes every day to do your workout or your exercise and at least do 10,000 steps a day. That will give you two points. And spend at least 15 minutes to use that to meditate and pray and then 10 minutes to visualize to achieving those um, goals that you set and another 10 minutes to focus on your daily plan activities what you're going to do for the rest of the day or what you're going to do for tomorrow or for the week and um, being a beginner please spend at least two hours to grasp everything and take notes that gets two points the end goal everyone has to target for 10 out of 10 and um, also post that in our group so everyone can learn and uh, move from there and uh, because we are going to help um, each other so everyone has to follow this and please please post this achievements and there is combo internships coming your way i don't want to cram everything into one um, uh, course for a start so i divided this into three different courses so to give the full or uh, learn the full uh, experience of cortex m4 series you got to invest on buying beginner intermediate and advanced and this is a very good investment uh, because you will be learning a whole lot of the new microcontroller m4 and that is a very uh, specialized microcontroller most of the projects uh, they go for this because it has got um, reliability and versatility in that and it's very useful and also stay tuned uh, with us there are more coming and these are in the process once it's available you will be the first person to know and you will be able to learn all of this through our um, um, online course structure. I once again thank you, thank you so much for your patience to go through to learn about uh, the stack memory, how, it, uh, how you were able to change from MSP to PSP. And please go and revise back all this content so far so you'll be uh, more familiar yourself. And please go and enjoy the dessert break. And this is Arul and Bukarasu. I'm signing off on behalf of A2DG. Huru for now. I'll see you in the next session. Until then, take care. And I'll see you, catch you in the next lecture. Thank you. Bye now.